You mentioned a pitcher earlier. One of the things we do when we're picking up starting pitchers this part of the year is you have to take a pitcher on a losing team or a non-competitive team. And that's what I'm going to do with Chris Bubich. Off to a great start. He's got one walk, 13 strikeouts. He's only 20% rostered in Yahoo, Kansas City starter. He's always had swing and miss stuff, and it's been more swing and miss this year. But the big deal with him has always been control, right? He's walking like over four guys per nine innings. But a lot of times, young pitchers, that's the last piece they add, the last piece of the puzzle where they get a hold of, whether it's confidence, being able to live in the zone, or just you know, fine-tuning their command. He's looked at, whenever I see that walk, walk strikeout is what we're looking at early in the season. You ask what stabilizes yep. quickly. Cause I know we want the big samples, but you can't wait till May or June to start making moves. You got to do stuff now. Well, if I see one walk and 13 strikeouts from any starting pitcher, I don't care who it is. Yep. I'm interested. And then the case of Bubich did a first round pedigree. He's always had a little bit of prospect juice. I know it's Kansas city, but again, we talked about the NL central, maybe not being the hardest division for whatever divisional play means in 2023. I say the same thing about Kansas City. Nobody really scares me. I mean, even the better teams, Minnesota's okay. You know, Cleveland kind of death by a thousand cuts. It seems like the yep. Whites always have injuries. And then Detroit's just a bad baseball team. In fact, I know you were going to mention a Detroit Tiger. You wisely took them off the list. That's who the Tigers are in 2023. It's like three guys you're on a roster. So uh, Chris Bubich, maybe you have to handle him. You, you'd steer him away from the tougher matchups. But the majority of his starts should come against the AL Central. I think that's a good place to live. I'm going to trust the walks and the strikeouts. Yeah, and Bubich is another one of those pitchers who's making some changes with his arsenal. And I feel like every offseason, the pitchers who maybe haven't quite made it yet, they're making those tweaks. They are open-minded. They're going to drive line. They're they're looking at different shapes of pitches, pitches they can add against opposite-handed hitters. Whatever they can do uh, to get better, we're seeing this every year at this point. So Last year's version of Chris Bubich is not the same as this year's version. Uh, so I think that is that is a wise play as well. I like Jose Alvarado with the Phillies right now. Uh, rostered in just 32% of Yahoo leagues. And at this point, I think he's the best pitcher in the Phillies, in the Phillies bullpen. Of course, the Phillies signed Craig Kimbrell during the offseason, but he's not quite the dominant force he was uh, earlier in his career, of course. And while there was some hope from fantasy managers for Sir Anthony Dominguez this spring, he's had a pair of disaster outings so far this season. His strikeout rate has fallen sharply in this small sample so far this season. Meanwhile, Jose Alvarado is striking out everyone. And that's not really an exaggeration. He's faced 13 batters this season. He struck out 11 of them. 11 out of 13, uh, one, one hit allowed, no walks. And this is really a continuation of how Alvarado looked down the stretch last year and into the postseason as well. Now, the question is, how do the Phillies want to use this weapon? Would they rather save him for spots in the seventh and eighth innings against, you know, maybe the middle of the lineup, the top of the lineup? That's possible they save him for that. Maybe when they really need an out, if there's a runner in scoring position. Sure. But I still think there's opportunity in this bullpen. Uh, Kimbrell looks very vulnerable. Dominguez not pitching well so far. Even if Alvarado's not getting all of the save chances, or even maybe any, I think he can get you value in mixed leagues when you're talking ratios and strikeouts over the course of a week. So I, I think this this uh, roster number should go way up. Totally agree. That strikeout count should just be a flashing red light that you have to add this guy. And the shape of baseball is different now where more wins are filtered into the relief position. So as yep. you mentioned, even if Alvarado doesn't necessarily become the capital C closer or he's part of a committee, or maybe he's even just the, the fireman who pitches in the high leverage spots, that's going to yep. lead to wins. I, I could see him having a season where he wins seven or eight games and maybe has a handful of saves. So yep. he's going to get high leverage work. That's going to lead to value. And in a lot of leagues, K per nine is really as important as strike raw strikeouts. And as you mentioned, if you're making that final pick, say, in a weekly league, maybe yep. the chances of Alvarado pitching two or three times and getting like six or seven strikeouts is better than some fringy streamer that may not have a matchup you like. I, this guy, yep. I'm surprised his roster tag hasn't adjusted yet. He'll probably have – if he gets a win or a save in his next turn or his next appearance and maybe strikes out three more guys, then people are going to be, okay, this has gone on long enough. I feel like this is something that we got to get in on now. And by the time yep. we do this show next week, maybe he'll be over 50%. Of course, if he gets a save, that will blow everything out of the water. But I sure. think that's a great call. You get you get to follow the strikeouts, and you have to trust that if he has a leverage role, he's going to get either wins or saves. And those will both help our fantasy team. 